Senators David Vitter, a Republican from Louisiana, and Sherrod Brown, a Democrat from Ohio, unveiled two weeks ago what they call a bipartisan bill to increase capital requirements for big banks to end too big to fail bank pitfalls that helped create the 2008 global financial crisis. Here to chat with us about this proposed legislation is one of its authors, Senator Vitter. Senator, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for the invite. Well, the first question, uh, people are, who are familiar with the Dodd-Frank Act know that the bill included risk-weighting assets. Even with your proposal for much stronger 50% capital level requirements among banks that are holding more than $500 billion in assets, are you concerned about throwing out risk-weighting assets? Well, I think the risk-weighting system in general in Basel II and proposed in Basel III is hopelessly complicated. And so one of the things this bill does is replace that with a much uh, simpler, more direct standard in terms of what capital means and how you count capital. And so I think that's one of the key aspects of the bill. There have been many, many economists and others who say that this risk-weighting system is very easily gamed, and I think there's a lot of evidence for that. Sure. Now, I, I do understand wanting to make it a bit easier to understand, but um, in theory, your proposal would require the same capital levels for, say, a junk bond investment as an investment in U.S. Treasuries. Well, um, not exactly the same, no. And, but we do get away from the complicated risk weighting that you're referring to, yes. And I think that's a good thing, again, because I think there have been a, there's been a lot of evidence that banks can game how they risk weight and how they count capital uh, to really lower the requirements. So that's what we're trying to address. Of course, the other thing we're addressing is just demanding more capital buffer in general. And there have been also a lot of studies that show there's a huge correlation between level of capital and survivability in a downturn. So the three goals of this bill are real simple. Number one, protect against these mega banks going under again in a downturn. Number two, related to that, protect the taxpayer because unfortunately too big to fail is still alive and well after Dodd-Frank. And number three, even the playing field so that there's not this huge advantage in favor of mega banks uh, compared to smaller institutions. I, I know I'm sticking to the, the risk weighting here, but uh, when you get into the process of trying to flesh out this bill, get the right amount of votes, uh, the risk weighting question will come up as it is a part of the, you know, Dodd-Frank. It's a very much a part of the discussion on a whole about too big to fail. So I wonder, in the legislative process, would you be willing to bend on risk weighting and include it in your bill? Well, look, we're open for discussion with anybody about anything, but in the legislative process, I actually think that's going to be an attractive feature of our bill because I think there's a widespread and growing recognition that at least the version of risk weighting talked about now can really be gamed, is being gamed. So moving ahead, uh, what is your response to people or banks who claim that raising more capital will affect lending and therefore economic activity? Well, first of all, there's a huge amount of capital on the sidelines now that isn't being lent. And I think that's for a whole host of reasons related to businesses and uncertainty about the economy. So I don't think um, there's a, a real constraint on that side as it is now. Secondly, I, I think if this creates a whole lot more security and stability, it's worth it. And I think it will create that security against losses and downturns and to protect the taxpayer. So let's assume that your bill passes, right? Uh, so you get it through the Senate, it goes through the House, and congratulations, it's passed. Um, should it pass, how would you counter the regulatory snarl that has blocked implementation of the Dodd-Frank Act? Well, I think this would streamline that because the capital standards, for instance, are simpler and clearer. We get rid of this utterly hopelessly complicated risk weighting that you were talking about and other things. So I actually think it makes the regulatory side a lot cleaner and simpler. Also, a uh, big picture, this is an attempt on my part to say let's have some systemic reform that can protect all of us, the economy and the taxpayer, rather than this avalanche of overregulation. I think that general approach is a lot more effective rather than just multiplying regulations and regulators seemingly with no end in sight. 
Mm. But if but if you do encounter these these regulatory pressures that are kind of trying to block the implementation, how do you think you'll circumvent it? Well, the bill's pretty clear, so I don't think it would be very easy to just frustrate implementation of the bill if it's passed into law. I think one of the strong suits of this bill is that it's pretty darn short and clear and crisp compared to sort of the hopelessly jumbled and complicated and confusing model that Dodd-Frank is. Well, Senator Vitter, uh, thank you so much for being with us at the street today. We appreciate it and take care. Thank you very much. I'm Joe Doe, The Street.